Hi, this is Dr. Todd Kays, mental coach, uh, coming to you from my office in the golf room. And uh, I want to talk about mindset today. And we talk about a lot of that in sports and in golf, about having the right mindset. And every single time you, you turn on any PGA or LPGA event, they talk about he has the right mindset, she has the right mindset, or you, you see it in high school sports, you see, it, you see it on all sports. It's not just golf. But one of the things that I, I want to talk about today is the importance of the mindset and more than that is the importance of training the mindset. So when, when you think about your mindset, one of the things I want you to really think about is what is your ideal mindset when you're playing golf? So how you're going to access this information is simply go back to some of your best tournaments and find out how you were. What were you thinking? How were you acting? What your body feel like? Was it loose and fluid? What were your emotional states? Was it more determined? Was it more relaxed and carefree? There is no necessarily right or wrong mindset. It's just what is effective for you. But what I find is that so many golfers do not know what their ideal mindset is, and it's simply a matter of taking that time to journal about, write about, talk about some of your best tournaments. And the four categories that I encourage you to go over are your behaviors. How were you acting? Did you talk to your playing partners? Were you smiling? Was your head up? How were your nonverbals? Well, in other words, what would I have seen if I were just watching you from afar and I couldn't hear anything? The other thing I ask you to think about in some of your best rounds is, what were you thinking? Sometimes it was as simple as a swing thought, and that was all. Sometimes there's no conscious thought, and that's usually when we play our best. So that's one of the, the, the ultimate states. And that is always going to come from practice and preparation. So the other thing is, the, the third thing is your emotions. You know, some people play better with a little bit of an edginess, with a little bit of a determination, with a little bit of uh, mild anger, if you will. And, and some people play totally laid back, carefree, light. They're totally focused on themselves. And they really don't get upset and they let things roll off. That may work. Again, whatever is effective for you. And then finally, pay attention to what your body's doing. What's your heart rate like? What's your breathing pattern like? How do your muscles feel? Specifically, also, muscle groups. So when you're playing your best, that's how you're going to get your ideal mindset baseline. Now that doesn't mean it's not gonna change throughout you know, your career or month to month, but you need to know what your ideal mindset is. You need that template, otherwise you don't know what you're practicing. Because that's the second part I wanna talk about today, is you gotta know your mindset, and then you gotta train your mindset. And that's where the difficulty comes in, is that most golfers I work with can't really, or have struggles with putting words to their mindset. And that's what one thing I help them do so it is very clear. It's almost like if I were to tell you to meet me at Starbucks, and that's all I said. Well, you could drive around all over the place looking for a Starbucks, and you would have no idea. But if I said, meet me at this Starbucks at the corner of these two streets, and it's back in this shopping plaza right next to this store, you would exactly know what to do. But when you don't know your mindset, how are you supposed to practice? And if you don't practice, how are you supposed to get better? Now, you understand how to practice your wedges. For example, you want to practice distance, distance control with your wedges? You know what to do. You sit there on the range, you put towels, you put markers, you put different things out there at 100, at 90, at 80, at 70, at 60, and you go over and over and over again until it's trained in your body that you are playing golf neck down, that you look at an 80 yard shot and you just feel it in your body. You just know what an 80 yard shot is. But that's gonna come through training over and over and over. So if 
That's what you need to do with your wedges. You also need to do that with your mindset. Now that's where the difficulty lies is because most of you have not been able or learned how to train that mindset and how to practice it. That's what I teach. And that's just the kind of opening of this video here is to just simply open your mind to, you need to know it and then you need to train it. You already know how to at least begin the process of finding what your ideal mindset is. Now it's, what do you do to train it? Well, here's a couple tips. I have about 20, but here's just a couple of them. One is that every single time before practice, after practice, before a tournament, after a tournament, you are intentional about bringing that mindset, whatever you can put in words and try to make it very simple. I'm going to be carefree with excitement today. Perfect. If that's what describes your ideal mindset, that's what you keep coming back to. But you've got to be intentional before practice and you got to bring it throughout practice so it builds into your subconscious. You can't just wait until the morning of the tournament and say, okay, now I'm going to do it. That's like picking up your wedge the morning of the tournament and not having practiced distance control for the past three weeks. That's exactly what you're doing with your mindset. And as, as most golfers know, your mindset, once you're on the course, that dictates how well you do. That dictates the outcome. It's not your swing. It's not your fitness. It's your mindset. And again, if you have not practiced it, trained it, then you've got to look yourself in the mirror and figure out, hey, I've got to find out how to train this more consistently. So that's the one way. Get a journal, be very intentional. After practice, after the tournament, how well did you adhere to that mindset, that process? And if you did well, congratulate yourself. And if you didn't, don't beat yourself up, build yourself up. Say, you know, I'm, I was at least a little bit aware of it today, but I'm gonna keep working at it. Okay, that's one thing. A second thing is very simple, is, is, is what's called visualization, imagery. Uh, it's a very simple, where you do close your eyes. And I have a lot of golf imageries on my podcast on SoundCloud. But that's where you actually close your eyes and you begin to feel the carefree. You begin to feel the confidence. You begin to feel the determination. Whatever those ideal mindset traits are for you, you feel them. It's not like you think carefree, you feel carefree. And so that's why you have to incorporate it in your body. So that comes from visualization and imagery. And I'm not talking a half hour a day, an hour a day, two hours a day. I'm simply talking, I'm simply talking 10 minutes, five minutes, five days a week before you practice. Bring that mindset into your body so that you practice with a higher quality and you practice mindset. Bring that visualization session before you play in a tournament. Then you bring the mindset out on the course. And I guarantee you're gonna practice better, play better. But ultimately, you're building the mindset that's gonna become part of your subconscious. And just like your wedges, just like your fitness, those three legs of the stool, mind, body, skill, are all being addressed. That's when you're gonna play your best golf. 